One game. One game from the Big 12 title game. No matter what happens this week, the Sooners are guaranteed to be in the Big 12 title game on December the 2nd in Arlington. But you're one game away from building that momentum to its maximum to get to 11-1 and and, of course, big picture-wise, more importantly, remaining in the college football playoff chase. The Sooners, again, number four, according to the college football playoff poll, 10-1, and coming off the win over Kansas. The offense, um, still number one in the country. The defense is, is coming along. I know it's Kansas, but you have to like the way that the defense is playing right now, especially with that defensive line with Lampkin, you know, with Bledsoe, you know, with those guys, and the effort that they have put forth. And the Sooners... One game away from getting to 11-1, and one, and like I said, entering the Big 12 title game next week with a ton of momentum. But you can't take West Virginia lightly. Yeah, they lost to Texas last week, but it, you know the Mountaineers are still a pretty fair football team under Dana Holgerson, still 7-4 and four in the year. And this last loss that they had against Texas, 14 points, well, that's their biggest margin of defeat. So they haven't been blown out in any of their games this year. And we're going to talk more about Oklahoma and West Virginia just a little bit. But, of course, as you probably have heard, Baker Mayfield won't be starting in Saturday's finale against the Mountaineers. In fact, he has lost his title for the final home game of his career as captain. Okay, And that, you know, had to really bother him. In fact, he showed plenty of emotion in a press conference earlier this week, as did Lincoln Riley. You know, during his weekly press conference, showed a ton of emotion. In fact, went for about a 30-second stretch and, you know, just didn't say anything, just weeped. And, by the way, I would personally like to say that Stephen A. Smith is an absolute jackass. I mean, if I had any respect for him, even just a just a crumble of respect for this loud mouth from ESPN, of course, who is a ratings generator, that respect's out the window after he basically made fun of Lincoln and Baker for showing emotion. Look, if you want to get on to Baker for what he did last week with the crotch grabbing and with saying F you and, you know, earlier this year for, you know, getting arrested, you know, for basically eluding the police, being drunk in public. If you want to get on to him for that, okay, that's one thing. But when somebody shows emotion, real emotion during a press conference, don't mock them. It's serious, okay? OU is a family. And for Stephen A. Smith, who's supposed to be a respected journalist, to basically go goofy on ESPN, and maybe that's what he does frequently. I don't watch the guy every day. But to mock both Lincoln and Baker for showing pure emotion? Who is this guy? I mean, I understand. ESPN has Stephen A. on there every day because he generates the first word in what ESPN stands for. Entertainment. Entertainment. They pay him a lot of money to speak his mind, and to sometimes act like Bozo the Clown. Well, Stephen A., you accomplished that feat big time. Stephen A., you're an idiot. There you go. But anyway, there's no doubt that Baker is paying the price. He's not going to start, and even though Lincoln Riley has an idea of when Baker will come into the game, he's not revealing it. Obviously, for strategic purposes, if you put a gun to my head and said, when is he going to play, I would probably say the third possession of the game. But then again, I am just speculating. I don't know. Obviously, Kyler Murray will get the start, and I would imagine that the Sooners will probably play it conservative those first two possessions. The big thing for the Sooners in a game like this is how does Baker react once he comes into the game? Does he try to do too much? Is he emotionally rattled because of the fact that he's not going to be a captain on Saturday and because he's not going to start? What will he be like mentally? That we don't know, but we'll find out pretty soon. And the other thing, too, if you're curious, does what happened to Baker Mayfield by not starting in this game hurt his Heisman Trophy chances? In other words, did, what, what he did last week, you know, at Kansas, with the cross grabbing, with saying F you, with his antics, okay, does this hurt his Heisman chances? In my opinion, not really. There will be some out there who will vote down on Baker or not vote for him at all on their ballots, okay? But to me, most of them still will because it's about athletic achievement. Yes, it's about character too, but what he's done this year on the field, it, he's so far ahead of everybody else in front of Saquon Barkley, in front of Bryce Love, in front of JT Barrett, in front of any contender out there in the country 
Baker Mayfield, when it comes to on-field play right now, big time, head and shoulders above everybody else. So I don't think what has recently happened is going to cost Baker Mayfield the Heisman Trophy. In other words, I think he hasn't won. So let's talk a little bit about this game. And like I said, um, Kyler Murray, um, backup QB, of course, you know, started a little bit at Texas A&M. Now will be the starter on Saturday. And I would suspect that uh, Coach Riley will probably have um, Kyler Murray in some running situations. Remember, West Virginia plays the type of alignment to where it's usually five defensive backs out there. So this could be a prime opportunity for Kyler to show what he can do with his feet. I'm not saying he won't throw it all, but I would say the strategy for a guy like Kyler Murray for Lincoln Riley is for Murray to use his athleticism and, of course, rely on Rodney Anderson and Trey Sermon as well. Um, when you're looking at West Virginia on the flip side of the ball, of course, there's no Will Greer. Okay, It's kind of funny because a few weeks ago, you know, we were really anticipating the matchup of Baker Mayfield versus Will Greer, the West Virginia quarterback. Well, to start this game, we're not going to see either one because Greer, early in the Texas game last week with the Mountaineers driving, Greer dives, you know, toward the pylon, trying to break the plane, hurts his finger, hurts his hand in the process. He's done for the afternoon. And West Virginia doesn't score on that drive. In fact, they only scored one offensive touchdown for the remainder of the game. Texas did a really good job defensively. But you can tell that Will, you know, Will Greer's injury really had an impact on that game. And Chris Chuganoff, the backup, who hadn't played really since September, he was thrown right into the fire. And considering how well Texas' defense has been playing lately, that was a very difficult assignment for Chuganoff at such short notice. But remember... You know, we saw earlier in the year, like I said, we saw a backup quarterback in Iowa State. And you know what? Iowa State seemed to really um, get behind this guy. And, of course, as the game went along, you know, the quarterback began to pick up confidence for ISU. Big thing for the center defense, which, again, has played so well on that line. Do not allow Chuganoff to get that confidence, okay? Contain the running game. You know, Justin Crawford, a very capable running back, Almost, by the way, to the 1,000-yard plateau. I think he only needs about 40 yards to go. Don't make West Virginia two-dimensional. And remember about the West Virginia uh, receivers, the Jennings guy, um, Gary Jennings. He's already over 1,000 yards for the year, over 90 catches, but just one TD on the season. But still a guy that Chuganoff is going to big-time rely on. The Mountaineers um, offensively average about 500 yards per game. So it's not going to be a picnic at all. Sooners are a 22-point favorite, but they think that they've already got this game won, and they're thinking ahead to the Big 12 championship game. This game will be absolute trouble. So how the defense does early for OU, I think, will dictate how it could go for the remainder of the game. And that defensive line, is considering how well they've played lately, they could be the big difference maker in this matchup. My final thoughts on this game, I don't think Oklahoma covers the spread. 22 points even at home is too much. And again, we have to see how Baker Mayfield handles the spotlight once he enters the game. Of course, he's going to get a huge ovation from the OU crowd, but we'll see mentally how he does. I would expect OU to struggle in the first half, but I would expect that they gather themselves and play better ball in half number two. I'm going to go 38-24. to 24. I think OU wins it, but I don't think they win it by that three-touchdown spread that Vegas would suggest. Don't forget, I will have my three picks coming up later this week on this very web page. Please check it out. The coin and I right now are battling, going head-to-head, -head, and there's only two weeks left to go of picks, including this week. And don't forget, my post game of OU West Virginia will be on Saturday night. Boomer Sooner, and happy Thanksgiving.